Hello and welcome to Nikon Report, your weekly round of all the latest Nikon news and all other photographic announcements that we found interesting. Is Constantine here? And this is Becky. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? I'm doing okay. You know who is doing okay as well? It's Grace Westminster, who won Amateur Photographer Platinum Good Service Award for eight year in a row. And me and you were there to receive it, as well as Gray and Julian. We were indeed. And it is an honor to have received this award for the eighth year in a row. So thank you to everybody who voted for us. We hugely appreciate it. And honestly, couldn't have done it without you. Absolutely, because someone has to vote for us, isn't it? And someone has to like the service. That's another thing. But yeah, definitely, we really appreciate it as a not just Con and Becky and Gray, but actually everyone who works in the shop and who actually helps you to choose the right product for you. Now, Amateur Photography Awards also had a selection of different awards like best cameras and best lenses. And Nikon Z8 won the camera of the year, the product of the year, premium camera of the year, you name it. A Nikon ZF won the reader's choice. That's right. Now, the telephoto prime lens of the year actually went to the 85 millimeter f 1.2 s which is a stunning lens very well deserved so nikon took home four awards from the amateur photographer awards this year that's pretty good i guess if you release good products you're going to win some awards isn't it one would hope so yeah speaking of awards on thursday last week when we had a live stream with becky live becky in the premises of Grace Westminster, which is an occasion really, a special occasion, I would say. We announced a Michael and Pamela Roberts Award for Nika Nona subscribers. And yesterday we've selected a winner of the 28mm f2.8 special edition lens. Peter Grant, congratulations. Someone from Nika Nona should be in touch with you on that. So congratulations on the lens. And if you want to subscribe to Nika Nona magazine, all the information is in the description below. You can go to nikanonashop.com, choose a package, and if you want to £10 off, use content code for that. Ah, you got a discount code. Yay! Special! <laughs> I know, I know. Never had my own code, so I'm very proud of it. Yes, yeah, so you should be. Well, if you're looking for more awards, rewards, discounts, etc., then Nikon UK and Europe have a promotion of 10% off most of the Z and F mount lenses until the 19th of March. So you've only got a couple of weeks to take advantage of this, but pretty much every single F mount and Z mount lens is included, as well as all of the prime F mount lenses, all the 1.4s, the 1.8, some of the zooms, the telephoto lenses, like the 500 F4E and 600 F4E are in there, the PF lenses, even the 120 to 300 F2.8 FLED VR, which we talk about a lot. That's true. And then 85 1.2 Z lens and 135 planner are also 10% off, which is really good. I think the only lens that I'm included in the lineup is uh, the recently released 180 to 600 lens because it is indeed very popular. You know what's interesting is in the United States, Nikon Rumors is saying that BNH is finally shipping the orders from September. Well, in UK, we have 18600 free in stock. It's normally the, the opposite, but you know, it's always nice to have a luck on our side. But also the lens that on the clothes are generally a very long telephoto lenses with a wide aperture. So those expensive for over 10,000 pound lenses. But I guess, yeah, 10% on that is quite substantial. Yes, it is. And I'm impressed that they've put the planner on there already, actually, because that is a fairly new lens in terms of, you know, releases. In fact, I think the 180 to 600 is the only other one that's more recent than that, and that's not included. So if you've been holding off on a planner or maybe an 85 1.2 or even an 800 or a 400 mil, those are all on offer, which is great. Yes, absolutely. And remember, a month ago or so, we were talking about Nikon Z9 potentially going to the moon. Well, now, Becky, it's official. So NASA selected Nikon Z9 as official handheld camera for Artemis 3 mission, which is set to launch in 2026. So that mission will put the astronauts for the first time since 1972 on the surface of the moon. So it won't be your average Z9 that makes it off planet. However, the Z9 will be heavily modified to handle both the rigors of space travel and life on the moon. So Nikon and NASA are together redesigning the circuitry to prevent cosmic radiation from damaging the camera. And a new grip is being added with special buttons for common control so astronauts can operate it while wearing gloves. 
Custom firmware will modify noise reduction, HDR features, menus, file numbering, and so much more. And there will also be several Nikkor Z lenses that will be modified to cope with the surface of the moon. So they're going to go out there with a whole kit bag full of Nikon Z stuff. That's cool. You know, I really want this custom shutter sound thing to be implemented as soon as, because imagine you can just put you know, some alien sound, the creatures or something like this. Just, you know, <laughs> just The alien sounds. There's no aliens on the moon. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, if you want to just mess with your mates, astronauts, if you see what I mean. So just based on the previous cameras that went to space, yeah, the buttons generally being big and so they're not all crammed together because obviously astronauts wearing gloves and everything. So, and I assume, yeah, the custom film where we'll include certain things that are very important in the moon, for example, I don't know where I'm going with it, Becky, actually. So, but um, do you have any <laughs> Sticking idea? Sticking yourself into a little hole here. Mm. <laughs> if you compare the technology now to what astronauts have had to deal with in years gone by, I think the Z9 is going to be an absolute treat for them to use up there. I'd be really interested as well to see the results. And I don't know if those results will be shared publicly on the public forum, but if you don't follow NASA's Instagram account, I highly recommend it because it's absolutely fascinating and there's always incredible imagery up there. Oh, absolutely. And if you go to NASA website, there's a whole catalog of photographs there. So definitely, I think I'm looking forward to see Nikon Z9 images on there. You betcha. Now for some more Nikon news. Nikon were at CP Plus this year in Japan and there wasn't any new release or anything. There was no Z63, nothing that we had talked about. However, there was, would you call it a sneak peek? I think so, yes. They basically showed an unreleased firmware for Nikon ZFC camera. Surprise, surprise. Who knew? Yeah, so this hasn't officially been released yet. And there's actually no set date for release. So we don't really know what the deal is. It's quite unusual for them to preview a firmware update like this, but that's what they've done. So new features actually include a different info screen opening with multiple random patterns and color options. Not really sure why. I suppose if you've got a colored ZFC, then you might want to have the menu match the color of your camera, potentially. There's also some startup opening animations. So when the features enabled, a random startup animation is displayed. It's quite cute. Changeable background colors for the info screen, as I said before, and a red frame display during video recording, which is something we already have in the Z30. We also have in the Z8 and the ZF. So good that they're bringing it to the ZFC for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's all cosmetics really, isn't it? I'm just, you know, when you are saying those things and I'm thinking, okay, yeah, we would come to Nikon ZF potentially you've got a blue zf so you may want to have the you know blue opening screen but if you think about it i'm just thinking zfc has been marketed for young people so the flasher i guess you will make the interface look and the more customizable it will be i think the more attraction you'll get from young people because they like to customize their own things. I think that's what it is. I mean, I do like the red frame when you record the image. I'm recording on ZF now. This feature is there. I can see my camera is recording. But mm. overall, I just wonder, it's all cosmetics, really. You know, it's it's not something that we photographers really need it. It's very true. It's not something that is a must-have, I would say. Did we also have a firmware update preview for, I think it was the Z9, where at one of the shows, my might have been CP Plus, they previewed the shutter sound customization and they had that cat meowing. Was that mm, this one? Mm. Right. So it was a similar kind of thing, but that firmware wasn't a standalone firmware for us. It ended up being put into a much bigger firmware update. So I wonder if they do something similar with the ZFC. Yeah. You know what they should do? They should release all those cosmetics and then sell them for some V-Bucks, you know? like Fortnite style, you know. So, Robux. <laughs> yeah, you can have all this, but you got to pay us. And they are microtransaction in our cameras. That's what's going to happen, believe. Unbelievable. All I can take from that is that either they'll do this small cosmetic update and it won't be any much of a major deal. It's nice to have, I suppose. Or they'll add it to a much bigger firmware update coming for the ZFC because the DX line of cameras definitely needs some love, I would say. Yes, I mean, a new product might help as well. You know, just a thought, really, you know. Nah. Speaking of new products, really, I mean, who needs a Nikon Z63, isn't it? So, but coming back to the firmwares, French publication Photo Trend published an interview that was taken at CP Plus with Nikon 
and it's titled we are putting more emphasis on firmware updates so i think it is all connected i mean they asking all sorts of questions in this interview about third party lenses about roadmap but we don't really get any information on that but definitely check out the links in the description below and you can rumors have kind of a, a short version of that article but on the film web they they said that Nikon has changed its organization. The firmware developers are now more exposed to customer feedback than before, so we can quickly reflect customer requests in the updates. Just chatting to Richie back in the day, he told us that he was participating in certain updates for Nikon Z8 and Z9 cameras. So they took him out, they flew him over, and he worked directly with the engineer. So I guess this particular quote reflects that. Yes, that does make sense based on the fact that we have had much more frequent firmware updates, I would say, than we ever had with DSLRs. And what they seem to be adding now is major features as opposed to just minor bug fixes or smaller features. Sometimes it used to be something like, you know, adding a menu option to the D3S or something like that. Now we're getting full bodied features added to our cameras, almost, you know, what would have been considered halfway upgrades in the camera lineup where you'd get an entirely new camera, now you just have to update the firmware. So I think the support for users and purchases and that customer oriented approach is really very well done. Kudos to Nikon for doing that, I would say. The answer is yes. But yeah, if you think about it, as long as hardware allows for expansion and we see it in cars generally where let's say one model can be released and last for 10 years you know so and then they will update the features if you look at the electric vehicles right now you know so so i think as long as we release the camera this is cutting age in terms of technology so again looking at cameras like z9 and z8 then yes you can just improve and improve and improve and improve however some of the older models that are not cutting age at that point what can you do a part of cosmetics can you improve the auto focus I don't know. Do we need a new hardware to do this? The release of Z8 and Z9 tells us that yes. So I think, yeah, as long as Nikon releasing the products that are future proof, and we're not talking about for a year, but for a longer period, and technically technology improved so much nowadays that we're not going to replace our cameras every two years now. now. Nowadays, we probably will stick with our cameras for at least five years, you know. So, and in terms of this, yeah, as long as they can support that hardware for these five years, we will be happy to have the camera. And on to more photographic show news. The photography and video show, previously known as TPS, is coming to Birmingham in March from the 16th to the 19th of March and there is a full schedule of talks we're going to include that in the description box for you so if you are thinking of going please do register and get your tickets ASAP if you want to have a look at what's on and available for the photography show then check out the link in the description box definitely and if you don't know what photography show looks like check out our old video from a few years ago where we stroll around different booths at TPS and talk to different people. All right, on to some other Nikon related news this time. I would call it third party, but Adobe added support for Nikon Z8 pixel shift feature and also support for some latest Viewtrox lenses. So let's talk about pixel shift first. Pixel shift on Nikon cameras such as ZF and recently added support of Nikon Z8 camera as well was only available for NX Studio users. So you would download the Nikon Studio software from Nikon website take the shorts, load it up to the software, and then it will stitch the images together. So Adobe added the same functionality. However, it's only currently available in Camera Raw 16.11. It's not available in Adobe Lightroom. So if you a Lightroom user, what they say is that the support will be added in a future release. In the meantime, Z8 pixel shift images can be converted to DNG in Camera Raw 16.11 or exported to a non-RAW format such as Steve in Nikon NX Studio and imported into Lightroom. So if you're using Photoshop, you should be fine. If you're using Lightroom, you may need to wait maybe another month to get that feature. Yes, and I would say that if you do want a really straightforward and simple way to 
merge your pixel shift photographs together, then honestly, NX Studio does a fantastic job. In fact, we did actually film a video on it and it will be coming to YouTube soon. So by the time it is published, every, every software out there <laughs> will have the ability to use pixel shift. But when we filmed it, it was only NX Studio. And I have to say, I was impressed with the speed at which it works on the Nikon, Nikon's own software and the output that it produces. So it's definitely worth a try if you've got a ZF or now a Z8. It's uh, it's really, really interesting. That's right. By the time this video is out, probably Picasa will also support pixel shift on Nikon Z8 <laughs> and ZF cameras. I don't even know if Picasa exists really still. <laughs> yeah. Now, what they also added was support for some new Viltrox lenses. So we have a Sony lens, not so bothered by that one, but they have included the new Viltrox AF 20 millimeter f 2.8 Z and here's one I made earlier it's not going to focus there we go mm. and that the one you've tested over the week that's right this is the one I've tested it's a lovely little lens so it's nice that they've added support for that they've also added support for the AF 27 mil f 1.2 and 28 mil f 1.8 Z lenses so if you have any of those Viltrox lenses you now have all your profiles in Adobe hurrah how interesting. And you know what? I mean, speaking of Viltrox lenses, actually, they've just announced that the DX 27mm f1.2 lens will be coming to Nikon Z mount very soon. So it's already available on the Viltrox store, which you can order from them. But it's a wide aperture DX lens. So 1.2 aperture is pretty good to have. And obviously 27 gives you roughly about 40 millimeter focal distance on DX camera. Very exciting times, Becky. It is. What a time to be alive. Absolutely. But Adobe have already added support for it. Very good. Very it's good. It's not even out yet. And <laughs> they've certainly exactly. added support. That, that's the fastest Adobe have ever worked, I must say. Anyway, I'm impressed. That's true. But now from highs to lows. Unfortunately, mm. Japanese photo stores are reporting that Nikon discontinued Coolpix P1000. It's the super telephoto digital camera with 125 times zoom. So that's apparently been discontinued. Nikon also discontinued NL19 battery. And that was the battery for cameras such as the Coolpix W100 or W150. So those sports waterproof one cameras. There you go. On to some rumor non-rumors, which have nothing to do with the Z6 Mark III. There was a brief flash of a rumor about a Z9H, which actually appeared on the Sony Alpha rumors video, which has now been deleted. But a Sobinet captured this information because the internet has eternal memory. And even if you delete something, it will still be somewhere in recorded memory. That's right. So what they said in this video, they said a very good source gave me information about Nikon products. That's Sony Alpha Rumors, okay? So mm. very good source. All right, so please note that this is the first time I have received information about Nikon from this source. So it's a good source. First time they received it from it, the Nikon information <laughs> from them. Um, I don't know if Nikon relates information is reliable or not. Uh, good logic. Okay, stick with us. So what they say that according to them, Nikon will soon announce a high-speed model called ZH, not Z9H, ZH. It's also said that it will be equipped with a global shutter like Sony A9 Mark III. It's a snorted down spec model of A9 Mark III, but has comparable performance. So comparable performance is pretty much Z9. Do you think we will see something like this anytime soon? Or do you think it's bogus and the video was deleted based on that? I think that... It's very tough to say because the source is apparently very reliable, but not usually giving Nikon information. So whatever, it's all basically saying, it's like saying my neighbor told me that Nikon would bring out a ZH, but they've never told me anything about Nikon before. So I don't know if it's reliable or not. Yeah. It's this sort of like comparable comparison there. So I don't really know if it's legitimate in any way, shape or form. Obviously, it's an Olympics year. I have a feeling that we have other models out there that, that need to be updated sooner than Nikon releasing, shall we call it a reactive camera. Because the Sony A9 Mark III is now out there in the world, would Nikon go, oh, that's doing so well that we should bring out our own version? It doesn't really work like that. Whatever they develop, they develop way ahead of whatever competitors are doing. And I think that the focus does need to be, whether it is or not, but I think it needs to be on the Z6 Mark III 
what's going on with the Z7 series, what's happening with our DX cameras. There's there's so many other cameras that need a look at rather than trying to develop a something completely new for that space. And honestly, if you think that you can't shoot something like an Olympic event with the Z9, then you don't know how to use the Z9 because the Z9 is a terrific camera. I know those are fighting words, but <laughs> that's what I have to say. But that's the thing. The Paris Olympics are going to run from 26th of July till 11th of August. So if they're going to release a camera for this, it probably needs to come out around maybe June, you know. But we also know that Nikon in the past did give some equipment to photographers to test out at those events. So that that we all know. And we always love to see a picture of a photographer from a very long distance and his camera logo and is blacked out. And we all guess, oh, it's a new camera or oh, it's a new lens, you know. So do you think it is possible for them to release a camera? Or do you think Nikon Z6 Mark III called the shotgun on everything. And as you said, a DX camera needs to come out first. Are there more important gaps for Nikon to fill first? I think there's two ways to look at it. Obviously, the Z6 Mark III would kind of be Nikon's bread and butter camera for the prosumer market because it would hit that perfect kind of middle of the road price point and spec point. It's not for the people that have tens of thousands to spend but it's more premium, shall we say, than an entry-level camera. So I think that that definitely needs to exist and needs to exist fairly soon. When it comes to the Z9H or ZH or whatever we want to call it, I mean, do you think that there is a space for that? Do you think it's a necessity at this point? Or can users who have the Z8s and Z9s actually get away with using these incredibly specced out cameras for their Olympic photography? Well, I'll answer your question with a question for you. Do you think Z9 is still a good camera? <laughs> I love how you asked that with such a straight face. <laughs> That's just the way I roll, internet. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Z9 is an amazing camera. And as I say, I think if you can't get the shots that you need with that camera, I do worry that you might not know how to use the camera because it is infinitely capable of doing that sort of photography. Absolutely. But yeah, if you if you believe the internet, you should sell all your cameras right now and just wait for another year for a new thing come out. And when thing comes out and you haven't bought it yet, the internet will tell you to wait for another year for the new thing come out. You know, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. But you know, this Z6 Mark III, yeah, we've heard rumors. I, I would call them non-rumors about this whole Lanzarote event and yada, 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 you know. And we obviously got all really hyped up that the announcement is imminent and it's just going to happen happened yesterday you know but nothing happened since then no more rumors nothing to add the fuel to the fire really so do you think Nikon is not going to announce it now till at least April June period obviously it's now the end of the quarter I mean we're already in March I don't think the announcement is happening now and obviously a lot of people who were predicting as well as us we were thinking that we will see the camera announced at the end of the March early April do you think it's still the case or we're looking at a later date now I think that we're looking at the new financial year now I am surprised I will say I was expecting I think even when we talked about our predictions for the year we were hoping it was going to be before the end of the financial year, but um, that doesn't seem to be happening. And obviously Nikon have slightly changed up the way that they announce and release cameras. So the predictability <laughs> is not there anymore. We can't sort of go, oh yes, they will bring out a camera every spring, every summer and every Christmas. We just don't get that sort of pacing when it comes to new releases now. So it's anyone's guess at this stage, I would say. So do you think it's just a Nikon's time that they decide where they announce the camera and they take it low and slow, as we would call it, rather than internet time where we need the camera right now or we needed the camera to be announced actually last year, according to the rumors? You know, so because the internet thinks that Z6 Mark III is overdue, really. I'm a representative of a collective internet, if you see what I mean. Honestly, like the questions you're firing at me are really tough because you're making it sound like I'm some official spokesperson and I'm really not. This is just me and my little opinions over here <laughs> in, my, in my little corner of the internet. I think that we did expect the Z6 III sooner. I think that we were expecting it to be on the release schedule of every two years because that's what we got used to. And then it didn't happen. But Nikon are not necessarily beholden to any particular schedule. They will release at a time 
that they want to. I thought that when we got the ZF, we were going to get a Z6 Mark III, but that didn't happen. What we got was the ZF and a fantastic camera we got as well. And I think maybe the success of the ZF possibly was a reason for delaying the Z6 Mark III because perhaps the feature set is very close or perhaps they saw what they could do with the ZF and thought, oh, actually we can do something more with the Z6 III. Let's work on a few more features. I honestly don't know. I, I think that both could could be plausible. But I do remember looking at the predictions for the financial year and we looked at what Nikon said they wanted to achieve for this financial year. And I do think we're what we have one release less than we were expecting, just based on what they said. Obviously, they've managed to make their numbers. They're doing very, very well. But ultimately, they're a company that will look at how and where they can make the most money. So maybe they've gone, we've reached our targets for this year so we can delay the release of another camera. They're not necessarily looking at what we, the consumers, want. Okay, so what you're saying is Nikon works in a mysterious way. <laughs> I think I think that's good. <laughs> I think that's good paraphrasing. Yes, thank you. The last thing I want to say, and coming back to the Sony Alpha rumors from reliable source, I can also <laughs> say that my uncle, who also works at Canon, confirmed those Z9H rumors. <laughs> Excellent. On to some rumor non-rumors. This is third-party news now. So Sigma's CEO has actually hinted at some upcoming full-frame lenses for the Nikon Z mount. In a recent interview, the CEO, Kazuto Yamaki, hinted at some upcoming lenses, because as we know, Sigma have three APS-C lenses for the Z mount and lovely little lenses they are too. So he has said, what was this in? Was it an interview? Photo That was an interview taken by Phototrend again, the French publication. So they doing a really good job around the CP Plus show. They ask the hard questions. Exactly. Okay, so the question was, are you going to release full frame Z mount lenses? Yes. And uh, so Kazuto Yamaki said, yes, full format is a source of opportunity for us. But our plan was to launch these three optics for APS-C to observe the market response. Today, I'd like to see how other objectives would be received. Yes, I mean, we, we talked about them releasing lenses and not overstepping each other focal distances, you know. So at the moment, we have the DX lenses that Nikon doesn't have many of, and they all cover the focal distances that Nikon doesn't cover. Obviously, Voigtlander releases lenses as well. But... What I'm also thinking, if they're going to release full-frame Z lenses, obviously we talked about the R series of lenses, that would be amazing, 1.4 aperture lenses, that would be amazing. But also, they've just announced a 500mm lens for different mounts, but not for Z mount. And again, if you look at Nikon Lone lenses lineup, we don't really have 200, 300, or 500 millimeter lenses. So again, Sigma can potentially exploit those focal distances as well. Very true. And then they asked the question, but to see the market response to full frame lenses, you would have to launch these lenses, right? Right, Becky? Do you need to right. raise a product in order to see the interest of the product? <laughs> Apparently, yes, you do. So that was all that the CEO of Sigma had to say. He just said, yes, absolutely, laughed in their faces and then dropped his mic. So <laughs> That's what you do. But I think Sigma full frame lens are definitely in the works. It's a given. It's just a question what type of lens they're going to release. But as we said, there are opportunity in the Nikon full frame lineup to explore. And there are several gaps that are not really gaps, but you can release the lenses that are not the same focal distance as Nikon. So the opportunity is there. So grab it while you can. Now on to some official news from a third party brand. Voigtlander, as uh, it is known, or Voigtlander as we like to call it, have officially announced a 75mm f1.5 spherical lens for the Nikon Z mount. This is a full frame portrait lens, beautiful Voigtlander optics and build quality with a CPU chip so that all of your information is read through the lens and you will get face recognition, etc. if you're using a camera like a ZF. It is not small and light. It is about 530 grams, but it is in a normal Voigtlander package, which means that it will be lighter than, let's say, the 85 1.2 Z lens, which has autofocus, but is big and chunky. Yeah, so this lens is already available for Leica mount. And as a frequent lurker of Fred Miranda Leica section, I've seen the images taken with this lens and they look amazing. So 
don't worry, the image quality is going to be there. The price of the lens is about £900, so it's not too bad as well. I'm talking about Leica, but obviously we will find out what the price of the Z mount lens is going to be. But overall, I'm just thinking about the size of the lens. It's not going to be as expensive as H5 1.2. It's not going to be as big well still weighing half a kilo but at least it's going to be a little bit more portable option and for sure on something like Nikon ZF it's going to look stunning that's right we are very much looking forward to getting our hands on one when we can and we will of course do a review for you too fantastic and that's a wrap thanks for joining us this week yes thank you very much for watching and or listening please give us a like and a subscribe if you're on youtube or if you're listening on a podcast platform give us a follow a rating a review tell all your friends all that good stuff absolutely are we available on th places like apple Podcasts, amazon music spotify unlimited of the world and if you prefer to listen instead of watching then definitely give us a play on those platforms yes and if you'd like to find us on the internet we are on instagram we usually post pictures sometimes of equipment that we've used while shooting YouTube videos. So if you look on Instagram, you can find me at Rebecca underscore Danese. You can find the shop at Nikon at Grays. And I'm with Konstantin Koshkin. We may see you next week or not. Bye-bye. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>